Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so today I thought I would show you how we can use ChatGBT to build custom indicators and studies in Thinkorswim. This is actually a study that I built uh, yesterday in Thinkorswim using ChatGPT. And I'll kind of run through what this does here. What we have is the high in this solid green line. We have the open on the solid blue line. And then we have a red line at the low. And this is on a two minute chart and it'll work on other time frames. And then those lines transfer over to dotted lines for the next day. So now we have, this was the close and it is in the dotted blue line. This was yesterday's low in the dotted red line. And this is yesterday's high at the dotted green line. And we can see that it's already starting to plot today's new lows for the day as well as the high and then our open. And coincidentally, we can see that today's high is roughly almost the same level as yesterday's high. So we actually opened up close to yesterday's open, came up to yesterday's high, and then we've started to pull back here. But I thought I would show you how I created this, and I'm not saying this is a, a good indicator to use. Um, this was really more just to try to create something semi-simple and to show you how to use it, or and to show you how to create this using a chat GPT or another type of um, AI type program. So I'm actually using ChatGPT 4, um, which is the paid version. Uh, GPT 3.5 uh, is the free version, and it'll actually work just fine to do this. Um, but once you create an account, you know, basically you just tell it what you want. So I said, I need a custom script indicator that plots the previous day's high and low and close on a chart. And then it spits out this code here. And I'll just kind of go through um, adding this in and kind of just show you the process. I'm going to copy that. And then we go to studies. I like to just go to edit studies. You'll go to create. And now we're just going to delete this code. Um, and make sure you're on ThinkScript Editor and not the Condition wiz Wizard. Um, so I'm going to do Control V to paste this code. And we do not have any errors, so that's a good sign. Um, right now, if you wanted to change the name of this study, you could do it right here. Just change uh, whatever the new study is right there. Just change that, whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to leave it how it is and hit OK and Apply. And now what that's done is, you know, in about, you know, 30 seconds there, we've basically plotted yesterday's um, previous close, previous low, and previous high. Right now it's actually on the bottom. We can actually move that to the top. And I'm actually just going to tell um, ChatGPT to change that. Um, I also want to state that I have very, very limited programming knowledge. So I'm sure other people that do this for a living you know, they'll have things to say. Um, mine is very limited, and in this process, I'm going to just use only ChatGPT and the errors that Thinkorswim is going to give back to me. Just copy them back in. That way, anybody should be able to do this. So anyway, <clears throat> the next thing I did is let's move it to the upper, and then I said let's also add the expected move um, to the nearest options ex expiration. And I started to get some errors here. Um, I'm going to copy and we'll just kind of show you what we went through. Now what I'm going to do is the study that we had already created, we're just going to edit it now. So we can click right there. Uh, just click inside here. I hit Control A and that highlights everything. I'm just going to delete all that. And then Control V and paste everything back in. And now we can see we actually have some invalid statements right here. So these are errors. And we can kind of scroll through here and it'll show us what those errors are. And that's the error right there. It's actually the calculating the expected move. And all you have to do is just, I just click inside here where the errors are, hit Control A, 
and highlight them. Control C. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to just copy this into ChatGPT here. And you can see that's where I copied them in. You just copy them in right there. Hit enter. And then it'll try to fix those errors. And that's basically what you're going to do is you're just going to copy and paste any errors you get and move along until um, ChatGPT finally fixes it. Um, on this particular time, it was having a hard time trying to find and calculate the expected move. Basically, it's telling me that you can't really do that, even though I know that you can. So I went ahead and just moved on, um, even though I did later get it to calculate somewhat of an expected move. Um, I just said, you know, let's not worry about that right now. Let's just let's add the open high and low to the current trading day as well. So. This is going to be the new code it's going to give us. And we'll just add in the new code now. And I think we start to get a bunch of errors here. Yeah, see, we are starting to get a lot of errors. So, you know, once again, you just copy and paste these errors over. And eventually you'll start to get a working code. Um, it may not be what you want, but you can see, you know, I've pasted in those errors right there and it's going to keep trying to help you out and eventually it will get it um, so it looks like it's did something right here so let's see what that looked like so we'll hit apply Okay, so what that did is it started to basically do for each candle. It was basically plotting an open, a high, and a low for each candle. And that's not really what we wanted. You know, we want to do the days high and low and not for each candle. So I think I went back in and maybe I told it something like that. I said, so yeah, for, for today it's plotting a new line for each candle for the open, high, and low. And now it's going to try and adjust that. And then we get errors again. So I've copied those errors over and gives us more code. And I get more errors. And I, I want to say I just, I got errors two or three times in a row here. Um, you know, like I say, just keep copying and pasting in there. Um, this entire thing took a little less than an hour. See right here, it, I think it actually spit something out, but it was still giving me the plot for each day, so it really didn't change anything. And now I'm saying, you know, just show the highest high and the lowest low for today, as well as the open. And let's see what it gives us now. And then I'm, I'm popping over, you know, more of the, the errors that it gave us. So this gave us, I think we had something working here, but I don't think it was working correctly. So let me copy and see what it looked like. So we do not have any errors. That was good there. And it looks like it was still plotting the high and low right there on the candle. Let's zoom out here and see what it looks like as well. Yeah, it's plotting the high and low on the candle right there. So it's still really kind of doing not what we want it to do. Um, so that really turns into you explaining what is wrong and maybe what needs to fix it. So, you know, I said the today plot is only plotting the high and low for the chart length example i have a three day chart is plotting the high and low for the three days it is using open from three days ago as the open plot 
and then the previous day appears to work correctly. So what this was doing is if I had, say, a three-day, 10-minute chart, what it was doing is it was taking the high and low and open. So, for instance, this was the open on that three-day chart. That's the open it's plotting. And then it's plotting. This is our high, I believe. And then it was plotting maybe this is the low. Um, so it was taking the entire chart and giving a plot. And that's also not what we wanted. So now we're getting more code to try. And then we get errors again. And sometimes you get lucky in it and it you won't get any errors. Um, <clears throat> And then on this one here, it was showing the open is zero. And then the high and low for the day was still doing it on a two-minute chart. And I was almost getting to the point where I was going to just start over because sometimes you get in this feedback loop that it just won't do what you want it to do. Um, and I want to say eventually it actually started working. So now nothing is getting plotted. So whenever I tried that one, nothing was working. And errors again. More errors. So you can see if I, if I try to do this in real time, we, we would have spent like an hour here looking at this. And maybe this is finally something that started working. I'm assuming it is. No errors. That's good. Hit apply and OK. Okay, so it is working. Um, so it's just plotting different colors from what I had. And so all I did is now I just changed the colors of these because now it's plotting the high and the low and everything just like it should. So we basically have two identical indicators on top of each other. They just, one of them has different colors than the other. So to change that, <clears throat> or to change it to, I guess, maybe look more usable, I guess. Um, we can go into the little gear right here. Actually, that's how I need to make that green. And close. It's blue. Now it should be right. So anyway, hopefully this will help. Well, maybe this will help you to maybe create some custom scripts of your own or indicators or studies. Um, you know, it's really about just trying to take the idea that you have and, you know, putting it to use. But anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.